Welcome to the Fuji booth here at IMTS 2022. Now I want to tell you a quick story. I have been to Japan and I have climbed Mount Fuji, but I'm about to show you something that's possibly even more impressive on the Fuji booth. So Frank, how are we doing today? Let's talk Fuji. Good, Tony. Thank you very much. So welcome to Fuji Machine America, where we invite you to step up the Fuji automation to maximize your productivity and increase your profitability. And isn't that what we're all trying to do is increase that productivity and increase that profitability and also have a little fun while we're at it as well. Let's talk about some of the technology that we're going to go into at each of these locations. And for everyone who's watching right now, if you have questions or comments, send those in. We want to talk with you because this is really fascinating stuff. Right, Frank? Absolutely. So, you know, I fully agree with you, Tony. So Fuji Machine America... Fuji Machine in Japan has been making machines for over 60 years. We specialize in automation and robotic solutions as a standard from our factory, right? We do all our own integration, we do all our own gauging, everything custom from Fuji, which means we have all the knowledge and expertise to pass to our customers to increase their efficiency uh, for production, of course. So before we jump into going from this machine to the next machine to the next machine, can we do a quick overview to get these guys excited about what they're about to see? Yeah, super, we can, we can. So we're gonna show you our Gyroflex Ultimate Multitasking Machine today with B-Axis. That's got some super technology built into it where we're doing a family of parts, three different sizes, large, medium, and small. We're reading that uh, pallet on our work stocker with a QR code. We're transferring that information to our CNC controller, and we're essentially machining three different parts without any physical changeover with our automation and also measuring those parts for quality and sending back finished parts to our work stocker. So that's one of the things you'll see today, one of the new innovations from Fuji. The second thing you'll see is our CSD300 dual gantry robot machine, super fast, lightning fast, dual spindle, dual turret, lightning fast machine, again, to increase your productivity and maximize your profitability. And last but not least, we'll show you today our new ANW303 machine, improved features, improved functionality, improved control, increasing your productivity, increasing your product profitability, and then showing our newest technology along with that, which is our Smart Ring Robot, six axis Smart Ring Robot by Fuji, and our AMR Rally Autonomous Moving Robot that can move the raw material and finished material autonomously to the machine. Which is what Frank and I will be closing with, so stay tuned for that. If you have questions, again, I just want to reiterate, with that being said, we're going to throw this over to Eric. I want you all to put your hands together, even though we can't hear you. From my buddy Eric, it's his first live stream. Hey there, hi there, ho there, folks. I'm here with my buddy John. And Eric. today we're talking about the CSD 802. So, 302. 302, sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, I've been nervous. From what I understand, this is a brand new machine, but it has an older iteration, correct? Correct, legacy machine is a CSD 300. We've had that machine in the marketplace for many years, 10 or more years to be exact. The new version is the two. And this new version from Fuji is all about flexibility and simplicity, okay? Okay, so with that simplicity, what's the difference from the first version? <clears throat> well, flexibility, we now have quicker gantry times, quicker turret index times, okay? Simplicity part, we now have one control versus two controls. So we had a, the last version had a control on top for the gantries. Now it's all built into one control, easier to use, more flexible, and it's all FANUC based. Yeah, that's fantastic. One control must be a lot easier to control the entirety of the cell. Absolutely. So how does, how does the in process work? Can you do maybe in machine gauging or part washing? In process, sure. If the customer wants <clears throat> the part coming through an OP10 or an OP20, to a, a Fuji-based uh, parts wash or in-process gauging, that's all possible. Now with a machine like this, you know, two front-facing spindles, I see we got 10, 10 station turrets here. Can you get live tooling on that? 100% correct. You can have live tooling, that would be the CSD300R as an option for the customer. Okay, so what do you often see, you know, perhaps in the field as far as unloading? Do you see a lot of conveyors or maybe rotary tables or vibration tables? All of that. The answer is all that and above. Fuji can do whatever the customer wants. We can do a work stocker. We can do a, car uh, pardon me, a uh, conveyor. We can load the part into a another machine if they want. Whatever the customer wants, Fuji can do it. In process gauging, live In tooling. Process gauging, live tooling. Sounds everything you could never need. So thank you for talking to us, John. All right, thank you very much. And now we're going to go over to Paul.
Matt, uh, good to see you. What a machine this is. Um, firstly, I just want to say well done, Eric. Great, your first live stream. Now, I'm uh, with Matt Ware, and we're going to be looking at this uh, rather tasty piece of kit behind me. Um, Matt, just tell us about the ANW 300. So the ANW 300 is basically a dual spindle machine, twin turrets. This machine is very modular and flexible in that we can do with tail stocks or with it out tail stocks or tail stocks on one side and tail stocks without the other side. Okay, so if we bring the camera a little bit closer, we'll be able to see uh, this side is obviously one area where the machine, uh, we're machining a shaft there, not actually cutting material, but you can see the, the part. And that's one spindle. And if you then move to this side, you'll see that that is where you have the second spindle. And um, both spindles have a tail stock. Uh, both parts are supported, but you can see it's basically two lathes side by side. Now, Matt, what's the advantage of having uh, a machine like this? The throughput of the machine. So now that we can do high volumes or medium volumes and a quality mix of parts on the machine. So you can do an OP10 and an OP20 and spread out your processes so that you get more throughput through the machine. Okay, great. Uh, now, um, if you've got any questions about this technology, because this is pretty awe-inspiring, it's very, it's very different, it's, uh, you know, unmanned running, lights out running, then get them into the comments uh, fields now and we'll answer them during the stream. I know we just have had uh, Tanya Gunn clap for Eric as well, which is always good to hear that some of the family are watching, Tony's wife. Um, Matt, now talk to me about this automation on the side. So everything is Fuji automated. These are Fuji built, op, uh, Fuji built gantries. This is our Fuji 6-axis smart ring robot. Right now, what it is doing is pulling, doing bin picking, pulling parts out, putting them in orientation device, presenting them to the gantry to be loaded into the machine and cycled through the process. Okay, now if you were running this machine uh, lights out, which you, you obviously would, what things do you have to consider? And what are, the, what are the potential risks? And how do you overcome those? So to run lights out and everything, our goal is to always put the maximum amount of available parts to run through the machine, at least one shift's worth, so that the oper that there's very little operator interaction with the machine. Some of the potential risks are that, you know, you could break a tool, um, you could, uh, you know, misload a part, but we have a lot of safety features already involved into the machine that we can manage the tool life, we can manage tool breakage detection, and the robot can sense when it has loaded a part properly. Okay, what's, what I'm always curious about with these machines is what you're doing in this side uh, compared to the other side. Now for me, is this a case that you have to balance the operations out? Ideally, you do want to try to balance the operations out as much so that one spindle is not waiting on the other spindle or the gantry is not waiting for the spindle to finish. Okay. Now, uh, with the automation that you've got here, is there any element of inspection as well? Because in process measurement, um, ensuring that, you know, if you make one scrap part, you're going to be making a thousand of them. You can't have that. So is there any way of, of detecting that through the process, maybe in the machine, but also externally to the machine too? Absolutely. We offer uh, post-process gauging with all of our machines. Uh, the gauging can be Fuji built or it can be an external gauge such as a Renishaw Equator or something like that with inspection and feedback to the controls to adjust it to make sure that we're making quality parts throughout the process. Okay, and this particular model is actually just turning, but you can do milling as well. I believe you can have a driven tool turret on both sides. Yes, this current model actually does have live milling and you can see that on some of the parts we do have a keyway where we were cutting. Okay, now if you step this way again, Matt, and the camera can probably step out of it so we can again see the size of the machine. I want to just know finally about the industries that you're, you have put these machines or would be put in them. A lot of automotive. Uh, we have done some firearms, agricultural, uh, and we're trying to expand into other things. Wherever you're buying two lathes and you're putting a robot in between two lathes, by the time you figure the cost of that, you're at the cost of an already integrated a and Okay, brilliant. Um, keep your comments and questions coming in, please. Not just about this machine, but either the one that Eric talked about, the CSD. Um, but for now, I'm going to hand you over to Rowan, who's uh, a machine that is um, similar when it comes to lights out running, but got even more sophistication to it. Over to Rowan. Brilliant. So thank you very much. We're going to be talking about the Gyroflex right now from Fuji. This is a brand, brand, brand new machine. 
I'm here with Matt. So, Matt, first of all, take me through on the left side here. What have we got? What kind of configuration? Right here, we got a 15 station turret. Each turret has live milling. We got spindle one. Currently, we got some step jaws with the parts we're making. And we also have another spindle, a B axis spindle. It should be coming down in just a second. Well, yeah, we can see it just do some static boring there, but it's actually a full milling spindle right there. Full milling spindle. It can go back and work on one side, off 10. It can go off 20 and work on the other side as well. And this is a ridiculous, it's a, it's a crazy uh, configuration for a machine. I've never seen two turrets, two spindles, and a milling spindle all in, in such a tight package. Yeah, and that's just part of running unattended. Uh, these days, people want uh, the workers to go work on other parts and other machines. And Let's go have a look run. at the second part. Yeah, so the so they want to run unattended. We'll talk about that a little bit later. There is a, a huge automation piece of technology right above and to the left and the right of this machine. But right in here, we're packed in a tiny little space. There's two big spindles. Um, why would you? Two 15-station turrets. Again, on the on the backside as well. So you can do full backside working. Because some on, on some machines, um, you can do quite a lot of operations on the main spindle, but you're quite limited on the sub spindle. On the sub spindle, right? that's correct. That's so. That's what this machine is made for. So we're passing between the parts now. We're going to transfer right now. So we're passing the parts now, and that's to do back working on the back side. Now, I mean, look, the, the test parts on here, if you don't mind me saying, they are a little bit simple, aren't they, for a machine like this? Yes, it is. Very simple. Exactly. So let's go and have a look at some of the actual parts you'll be making on one of these machines, because this is absolutely fascinating. Um, We've got loads of different parts here. So could you just talk me through um, why these are hard to make? And I, I guess these have got so many different features. Talk me through this. Yeah, so we can make automotive. We can do energy. This is a multitasking machine, so we're kind of making the machine to be able to make all these different kinds of parts. And as you can see here, we can do pump housings uh, for energy. We can do automotive for differential cases. And yeah, and these are cast. These are probably cast iron, these two. Cast iron here. We've got titanium. titanium. And cast, nope, titanium. Titanium. So another another titanium. That's that's a that's a carrier for a planetary gear system. So this is these are all critical components. We're not talking just uh, housings and stuff with kind of um, loose clearances. We're talking about really really precise parts as well. That's correct. Exactly. So we've seen the the crazy demo, the crazy uh, parts you can make on the machine. But it's not just the crazy parts you can make in the tiny little packed in space. Um, technology here. We're actually looking at a huge automation system here. How does it work? Where do the parts go in? Where do the parts come out? Parts will come in on our work stalker over here, especially for this application. Right, okay, so the parts go in over there. Yep, they'll go in over there, and then the robot, do you want to see the... the yeah, let's go in, let's have a look where they go in. So you put the material in on the left, and this is all for billet work, right? There's no bar feeding with this. No bar feeding with this. So we have a barcode reader down here, it reads the QR code, it tells it which family of parts that the robot is going to pick up, so that way it helps kind of eliminate any kind of human error that might happen. And also we'll have two guards up here that double checks to make sure that I picked up the right part. When it picks up the part, it'll take it over to spindle one okay. and it'll shoot the program from the QR code and tell it which, which part it's going to be making. And we've got a huge gantry loader that goes all the way down and will pass a part into the main spindle to start the operation. And that's why you need to be able to make the parts in one operation. Correct. Because you need to, um, you, there's no point just automating a, an, an op 10 process or an op 1 process and then having to take them all over to another machine to then manually load in all the op 2s. Exactly. Yep. So if you've got big contracts and they're really complicated, do you think customers, I mean, this being a brand new machine, do you think customers are going to uh, be interested in what this kind of machine can do? Oh, absolutely. Um, this machine is meant for high production, low mix, or high mix, uh, um, low production. So it's versatile. This is a, it's the gyro flex. It's very flexible, very modular. We can add extra uh, stockers if you want to add more parts for a high mix parts. Yeah, so you're showing off doing a family of three parts right now. Yep. Um, but that's like a, 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 I guess that's a low volume uh, yeah, uh, application. Sure. We've also got a question coming in from James on YouTube. Thank you very much, James. He asked, how easy is this to set up? Because I guess we've all seen automation. It's been around for a long time, but it's been getting easier and easier to, to change setups, change parts. How easy is it to set up this machine? It's very easy to set up this machine. The way we set it up is we're running three different sizes of parts. And over here, we've got step jaws. And all it does is come out and the step jaws will hold on to the part that the that the robot is bringing over to it. And it's done on both sides. So you can have the robot come down, load spindle one or load spindle two, 
or you can have the robot just come down, load spin to one, and do the transfer like you saw earlier, and transfer to op 20 to do back outside work. And once you've got it set up, you don't have to do any more operations, no post-processing. You can uh, run the whole parts off, whether it's low volume, high mix, or high volume, low mix. That's correct. Somebody else can go walk over and do some other work and let this thing run by itself unattended, and that's, the main, that's what Fuji does. We do single source automation. We're here to help people uh, let the machine just work itself and less less uh, human interaction. Absolutely. Less human interaction, single source automation, over to Tony. Frank, when I think of innovative spirit that I see right here, I think of both you and Fuji. And I know you want to dive a little bit more into the innovation of this robot. And then these cool little things moving around behind us, right? But let's start with the robot first. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. So here we have our smart wing six axis robot and we're picking a electric vehicle motor shaft here autonomously with a vision system in any orientation in the bin. Then we're introducing the part to a, a orientation station and then introducing it to a stand for the machine robot can pick it up. So everything autonomous and automated by Fuji. Fuji robot with fanic control. So let's step over here real quick because I know this hasn't been discussed all day. And you know how bad I want to jump in there and kind of skateboard these things around, but I don't think they're meant for that, are they? Absolutely not. But, you know, it can't handle your weight, right? This little guy, believe it or not, can handle almost 800 pounds. And we have, we plan to have a variety of sizes to accommodate the production needs of our customers, right? But you can see this guy moves autonomously via technology called LiDAR. And it knows the position, it shoots a uh, laser, and it reads the position, the distance to go, and it automatically delivers the raw material or the finished material wherever we need it in the customer's plant. That is pretty freaking cool, Frank. And with that being said, we know the audience is inspired to learn more. So much technology in such a short amount of time. There's going to be so many questions. How can they find out more about Fuji? You can contact us or one of our dealer partners at FujiMachine.com, where once again, we invite you to step up to Fuji Automation. Absolutely perfect. And we just want to give one final thank you to Tanya for actually sending in a clapping emoji for Eric's first live stream. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you again soon. You are amazing, Frank. Thanks. Appreciate you. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate you, bud. Thank you very much.